So here's some gym floor strategy. So I asked numerous personal trainers, which have been in a year, we're talking some of these trainers over 20 years. And it was like, what were some of the gym floor strategies? Not looking at flyers and stuff like that, but actually just on the gym floor, what were some of the things that you contribute to being a success in this industry for a long period of time? Know everyone's name. Literally, how hard is it to go up to someone, introduce yourself, if you're on the new trainer, and find out their name? Just knowing someone's name is a lot better than saying, you all right, mate, or hello there. Like, get to know their name, which is really simple. One strategy. Create a member spreadsheet with information about them. So you could get their name and you could be talking to them and you could put stuff down like if they've got children, if they've got hobbies, if they support a football team. So for me, if I, when I, when I was on the gym floor, I'd always try to find a common interest or a common thing that we had, um, whether it was a sport that we used to both play or it's a football team or whether we, the other person also has children. Create a spreadsheet, it won't take you long, and put that information down and just go through it. You speak to that person, go back and check it. This is um, a lot more than what other personal trainers do. And again, it's not that hard to do, is it? Another strategy is set daily challenges. So for example, it could be talk to someone new every single day. And guess what? At the end of the year, you're going to be having 365 new names finding out uh, about these 365 new members. And if you can't talk to one new person every single day on the gym floor, then maybe personal training isn't for you. Because again, if it means that you need to do this to be able to get paid, to be able to provide for your family, but you can't get the courage to do this, then it might not be for you. Smile at everyone and be approachable. Provide help. Make sure that anyone who walks through that door, that you're um, approachable, so that you're not locked away in the gym, you can be seen, you can be found, and you're providing help to everyone on that gym floor. Again, there's nothing like here which is groundbreaking. It's just putting the work in. It's actually, actually just executing. Listen more than you talk. Don't go there and start talking about you and what qualification you've got and what you like to do. Remember, going back to the very first few slides when it's what's in it for me. Think about that from the other person's perspective. Listen more and talk a lot less. Provide the best possible service and let your clients be referral machines. Going back to that example, if you're putting the work in, if you're getting client results, they're gonna go and meet up with their friends. They're gonna tell, their friends are gonna notice that they've made significant changes, not only in their appearance, but the way they are and their health. And let your clients be referral machines. And this is a one good thing about having a female avatar is that females like to refer a lot more than males do. Males start looking better. Another male's not gonna go, oh, you look great. Who's, how, what have you been up to? It's very more so, uh, a female thing and that's why females um, can be a great avatar especially offline when it comes to giving you a lot more referrals so train when your avatar trains this is a good thing as well because if you've got spaces then and you want to fill them spaces up then you train when those times that you're free are because other people are then going to see you training and I'm not expecting you to do anything amazing or, or catchy like that but what I want you to do is just train effectively and be seen. Again, getting people to know of you. Be the trainer everyone knows and talks about in the gym. If you're doing all the stuff above, which we just uh, talked about, then you're gonna be that trainer that everyone knows. So when someone new signs up, they may say, oh, what person trainers here around here? Which one do you recommend? We want the person who's referring them to always say your name and not the other trainer's name. Find a common interest outside of fitness, as I said before, just hobbies. If someone tells me they're a Chelsea supporter, then I feel like I have something in common and it helps and it does build that rapport a little bit quicker. And then a video analysis. So this could be that you're going around and you could use an app or just your, your um, iPhone or any, any smartphone and you're actually just recording them doing their lifts and giving them some feedback. There are apps out there where you can do some lines and stuff and just have maybe a little thing where you said, I'm gonna be doing, on this day, I'm gonna be analyzing the squat. On this day, I'm gonna be analyzing the bench press. And then what you can do is get people to come in, 
you can do some video analysis, show it to them immediately, give them some feedback, get them to do it again with your teaching cues, record it, and then do a comparison. And then what you could also do is say, right, if you want me to send the, like, the, the pre and the, the post uh, feedback with some uh, teaching instructions, etc., then put your email down and I'll send it over to you. So again, now we're capturing an email.